Taking Bill on her first trip, the Doctor encounters an early human settlement during the migration of humanity last seen in The Beast Below. But where are all the people? And why are the robots so keen on keeping the Doctor and Bill smiling? Find out today on another thrilling review from Voices from the Vortex. It's Vortex time! Broadcast amplitude at maximum capacity. Transmitting through time and space in three, two, one. Welcome to the Vortex. Voices from the Vortex reviews Doctor Who Series 10, Episode 2, Smile. Hey, hobo man. Hey, Dapper Dan. You both got your style, but brother, you're <laughs> never fully dressed without a smile. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and do this entire review while smiling. I hope you can hear me smile. <laughs> yes. Can you hear the difference in my voice? <gasps> I'm <laughs> so happy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody out there. This is Taylor. And this is Matt. And welcome to yet another review, Doctor Who review, from Voices from the Vortex. Yeah, Series 10, man. Woo! Yeah, 2002. Yeah, we're Woo! chugging along, you know. We get, we're on the episode two now. Boom. We're getting into into the nitty gritty here. Mic drop. Go good. Yeah, no. It's, <laughs> uh, so we, we have a strong showing, seriously. Um, continuing on from episode one, we've got a space episode, a future episode. Uh, as most seasons of Doctor Who do, we go to the future next. And uh, mm-hmm. Smile, uh, which was written by Frank Contral Boyce, who previously did uh, In the Forest of the Night, and directed by Lawrence Gao. Um, this is, uh, I, I think, uh, a pretty a pretty decent episode. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. You know, not one of the best, but it was, it was okay. I liked it. Um, right. But, you know, nothing really special about it. So... Taylor, looking at the story and the monster um, as a whole, uh, what what do we have in this episode that really strikes us as as being Doctor Who and as being new? Well, one of the things that I noticed in this episode was that they kept the they sort of kept that reboot dialogue going, like that sort of they're reintroducing stuff, and they kind of do that when there's a new companion. The, the new companion has to learn all of these things, but I felt like they were doing it for the benefit of the audience as well there was all this dialogue about how the TARDIS works and uh you know that you know the whole bit about him having two hearts again you know that's like it's a a reminder oh yeah he's got two hearts when of course we all know this right um (laughs) and uh and then the big thing is you know she finds out oh hey you like to help you know you go from place to place helping people and i mean as a as a Doctor Who fan, that's like, well, duh, that's what the whole story is. Right. But you know, that's something. You know, as the Eccleston, you know, year, you know, you watch that and you go, oh, this is the kind of character he is. I feel like they were trying to do that again too. And we talked about how they in the last episode they they wanted it to be kind of a reboot, but it's not quite a reboot. But well, I still feel like they're they're trying, right? Not, and not a reboot, <laughs> yeah. as in they were rebooting the show. A reboot right. is in. They wanted people to feel like they could come come into Doctor Who at that episode yes. and learn everything yeah. they need to learn. It's in the same way Rose from 2005 was a, a and I'm air quoting reboot. It's not a reboot. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just it's the beginning of. It's a continuation. Yeah, yeah and it's a good starting place. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you're right, and I think I think they once again prove that a companion who knows nothing about the Doctor is best when. Asking the questions where the doctor can kind of explain who he is and what he does. And it's a good way to get to know the doctor, too. Um, For all the failings of Capaldi's first two seasons, we never got someone who didn't know him. You know, he was with Clara the whole time, so he knew, you know, she already knew about him. This is a we should have had a new new character here for, for the doctor. We should have had a new companion right off the bat with Capaldi. Because I feel like we're just now getting to know the man. 
Uh, and he's explaining more who he is as a doctor now than he has in the last two seasons. Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Um, and this episode was... Um, I know in the intro I mentioned The Beast Below, but this episode really did remind me of The Beast Below. Yeah. It also reminded me of just all of those second... You know, the tradition of those... The second episode, they go into the future type things. This yeah. was really formulaic as far as how, how those episodes go what the companion learns about you know the, the kind of things they learn about the doctor and you know they they sort of it's the whole thing of okay the doctor's going to show them around and they're going to see all this really cool stuff and they're going to get to the big climax of the thing and then you'll find out like oh the doctor, the like, you'll find out. Like, the companion will go, "Oh, okay, so he needs my help." <laughs> right, Still, right. you know, like this is the companion will come in at the end and say, "You know, this is how I can help." Right. Um, which is it's what happened in this episode. I agree. Um, it, it's it's a great way to introduce people to Bill and to the Doctor. And yeah, this does feel. It feels like the Beast Below. It feels like the end of the world. It feels like New Earth. Um, it feels like all the things that uh, a good second episode should have because the first episode she, she's only with the doctor because she needs help this episode he's, she's traveling with him for the first time and he make, you know, kind of makes a point of that at the very beginning he's talking to her and he says you know, you know well you've already been on a trip once and she goes well this is a proper trip and she's right this is the first time she's actually chosen alright I'm going to sign up and, and sail off into the sunset with you buddy yeah, <laughs> well, and I like um, you know the 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 biggest uh, comparison there is the whole the scene where she finds the room that has the the dead woman laying there, and she sort of looks through that database, yeah, and sees all these images of of war and you know and um, the human race just being at its worst, you know, and that and that sort of gets her all emotional, and that really that's the biggest parallel to the beast below right there is when, you know, Amy goes into the room and has to vote, you know, and yeah. sees all that all that footage and it makes her cry, it makes her all, you know, is this what humans become and sort of finding out that fate of the human race. Uh, so that uh, that was a big parallel right there. I agree. I agree. And I'll let, you're right actually. I didn't think about that scene which takes place a little later in the Beast Below as well. Is it is very that's very similar. Uh, they have the sort of similar uh, situations. Um, so the story was was interesting, and and the the, the monster definitely was interesting in this episode. Um, yeah, they, and they go to it's true they go to Doctor this colony. Format. It's not really yeah. the monster. No, no, of course not. It's 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 uh, technology that somebody put it on the wrong setting, basically, and it's just doing its job. <laughs> it's One like of those that old monsters. Simpsons episode with the uh, crusty doll that kills people. He's like, oh, I see a problem here. You got it on the kill setting. <laughs> he flips the switch. That's exactly what this episode was. <laughs> There's your problem. <laughs> There's your problem. <laughs> so, yeah, they go to this colony, and it's all set up, and the monsters are, they're called the Vardy, and they're um, a combination of little flying nanobots and these uh, these big, uh, I forget the character's name, but the guy from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, <laughs> the, that character, that robot, life. couple of those guys. Don't yeah. talk to me about life. <laughs> so depressing. Marvin the Man, it's Marvin yeah, the Manically right. Depressed that's Robot. Right. That's it. That's what it is. It's basically those with a smaller head, and they're walking around mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, killing people who are sad. <laughs> Um, well, and I like, I like that by the end of it, you know, it isn't just that the doctor saves the day and this one, he's, he definitely doesn't save the day. He, yeah. He, he, he creates a new race. He, he gives them basically freedom from their past, which is an interesting theme for Doctor Who because Doctor Who is always about living with what you've done and kind of moving forward from there. So how, how do you adapt to the world? How do you live knowing where you come from but he he actively gives a, a a reboot to these these robots and takes away um takes away <laughs> it's a robot reboot <laughs> it's a robot reboot you know here's something interesting he does to these robots what he basically did to the uh um the zygons right right you know the whole yeah. thing from season nine because I was really, 
I was a little confused. I had, you know, I watched it twice, so as I got a little bit, you know, more information the second time. Like, okay, I think I know what happened here, but it was really confusing. He was just like, you know, you think, okay, he's gonna he's gonna fix the program. The robots won't kill anybody anymore. But instead, he kind of reboots the whole system and says, okay, this time you all live together now, and like, and he tells them, you know, they better smile. Yeah. You know, and it's like, wait, okay, so wait, are the robots going to start killing people again, or or what? You know, it was it it was kind of like, well, I fixed it, but not really. <laughs> well, and that's was, very Capaldi. Is yeah. he didn't fix it so humanity could have the robots? He fixed it so the robots were sentient, and he tells humanity, well, they're going to kill you if you don't play by their rules. That's very yeah. that's very twelve. <laughs> yeah, they're the indigenous people. Yeah, it was really yeah, it was really different. Uh, that's one thing I say about the ending is it was really different than what I, I thought was going to happen. You know, I thought he would just, you know, save the day like he always does, but it was, he did, but it was not in the way you would expect. I agree, and I liked, I liked seeing, I liked seeing that. I like seeing the humans have to live with them now, <laughs> and they have to figure it out. We we deserve that. We're terrible. Yeah, <laughs> we're horrible people. Yeah, everybody knows it. <laughs> So um, if we look at sort of uh, the way the characters developed in this episode, um, just real quick, Nardal, not so funny in this episode. Kind of a jerk. <laughs> um, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Especially, especially that last comment he makes, which is, I'm not making a cup of tea for a human. I was like, I'm not a slave to the human race or something. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was very like, that's kind of dark for nardal <laughs> really well yeah i was really surprised that he said that it was like why is he why is he so like it was like when the tardis didn't like clara at first <laughs> for some reason right it's like it's okay like... why is nardal being all mean to, to bill what's the big t- what's the problem um, it was but... very much so mirror mirror universe nardal yes yes <laughs> he should have had a the goatee same, <laughs> the same nardal <laughs> that nardal comes from the same universe as evil matt and evil taylor <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so basically, Nardal comes in and he's like, you know, he's the doctor calls him Mum. <laughs> oh, that's Mum. And uh, he comes in, you know, where are you going at this time of night, young man? I hope you're not going out, you know. Uh, and he's yeah. like, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Chill, Jeez, Mom. Jeez, Dad. <laughs> um, and and Just hang sort with my of Bill. Yeah. <laughs> We're in does my Bill, room. The door is open. Parents know God. where they where she is. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, keep the door open. <laughs> and so you anyway, don't trust me. Slam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play my guitar and rebel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he should have played the guitar. That would have been great. So should have moped and played the guitar. <laughs> if 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 Matt Whitecamp wrote <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> it, would, it would turn into a pantomime. So yeah, he's really adamant about the doctor not leaving, and so he calls it the oath. He's call, he said you took an oath, sir. You know, and he's like, I know, I know. Okay, I got it. You know, leave me alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, Bill. It's hard, Bill to, in this it's hard to see him not as a teenager. I know it's, it really is. Even though he's he's the oldest, it's really <laughs> he's such a teenager. You know, Matt Smith was such a little kid, uh, you know, and but but uh, Capali is such a teenager. It's not even funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, the other thing I liked about the characters in this episode was that the Doctor didn't figure things out right away. He he got it wrong a couple times. He was wrong a lot in this episode. He was like, "Oh no, okay, so I thought people weren't here, but I think they are, and they're dead." Oh. Wait no, I'm so I'm gonna blow it up. Oh wait, I can't do that. Everybody's here. Oh wait, I can't destroy the robots. <laughs> you know, it was just like he was wrong about everything. Well, and I like I like that it wasn't just that he was wrong. Even in the beginning, he knew he was wrong, but he tried to convince himself he was right because he started figuring out what might be wrong. He started uh-huh. figuring out that the, the the emotions were what decided the robots decided that you live or died. So, like, he even says to Bill, he says, you know, did I, what, what I said back there, did that convince you? She goes, uh, yeah. I says, did it convince me? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> she goes, no. <laughs> oh, and those badges. I love those badges. Those are really cool. That that sort of that those tech. Those badges were cool. Every time they flipped it over, they couldn't see it, and the faces were very amusing to see. You know, like, oh, that's what the doctor's thinking right now. He's he's being skeptical, or or when you didn't see his face and it turned to a smile, and you, so you just knew that he was smiling in front of the robots. <laughs> that was good too. <laughs> Um, uh, what what did you think of the production in this one? I loved how the colony looked. I thought it was gorgeous. Oh yeah, no, it was really great. It was there was a there was that really good futuristic, mm-hmm. you know, look that they that they always do on Doctor Who, and you know, I love it. I think it looked really good. It's that seventies to eighties sci fi that they really yeah do yeah now. lots of lots of curved architecture and mm. uh, just some really neat stuff. I whoever. You know, I wonder if that's like a building, like some of those places are a building, or if they built that sort of that set, you know, like, you know, those stairwells and some of right, those really curved right. areas. Those are really neat. Uh, did the nanobots seem to you an awful lot like the uh, nanogenes from uh, season one? From, oh, uh, yeah. Are you my mummy episode? Oh, yeah, that's it, right. Yeah. Nanobots attacking are are like that's a that's a common theme in Doctor Who, and it was kind of neat uh-huh. to see more nanobots because we haven't seen them in a while. But then I was watching this, and I'm like, I feel like we've seen this before. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, another Moffat episode. Well, and any time somebody just turns into a skeleton and the bones fall to the ground, that's Doctor Who right there. <laughs> People die that way a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, skeletons in the ground, skeletons in a spacesuit, skeletons it's, everywhere. Skeletons everywhere. <laughs> uh, and the music was good in this too. Yeah, it was. I felt like it had a lot of '80s era Doctor Who music to it. A lot of stings in there, stingers in there uh-huh. that were um, that were very synthesized. Yeah, I always love that about Doctor Who. They sort of, even though they sort of modernized the show, they always kind of stick with that. They know that that cheesy, almost mm-hmm. not super cheesy, but that cheesy sci-fi sound uh, right. makes m- makes it fun and campy, and it really adds a lot to the production. So yeah, uh, yeah, the music was good in this one too. I, I I'm excited for Murray Gold's soundtrack for this season. I really yes. am. It's Those so far I'm loving it. This, Murray Gold soundtracks they get better and better every season. They're they're just so good. <laughs> They do. And for all of uh, those of you who are fans of our uh, narrative podcast, those soundtracks are better and better every season in our podcast. We, we, we just blatantly take them. That's and, correct. Um, so, Murray, keep up the good work, man. Yeah. You're helping us we, out a lot, buddy. No. Uh, just Helping us out a whole <laughs> don't lot. Don't sue. We just, it's for fun. We don't get paid for it. We just. (laughs) Yes. I would like to make sure that to the, to the, to our five listeners, two of whom are the BBC uh, legal department, we do not make money on this. No, no. It's parody. It's parody. Um, It's total parody. I'm stealing all of it. It's parody. That's right. (laughs) Um, So we didn't get a lot of um, hints to the seasonal arc this episode, but there was. Um, a short little conversation that was interesting when, you know, she basically asked him what happened. And he gives the vaguest answer ever, of course. You know, he's like, uh, something happened, and because of that, I made a promise that I have to stay on Earth and guard the vault. And it, what is it? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that we're not going to get answers to that till the second half of the season. Come on. I know. Now. It's not, yeah. I really hope... I know Moffat has his, has his little formula, but I hope he breaks the formula a little bit and just gives us like a, just a little bit more and more actual information, not just to, not just like the, a vague sentence. I want more and more information as this thing goes along. Come on, Moffat, let's please well, let's do it. I'm wondering if this is going to be another season, like all of his other seasons, where the thing that's happening at the end of the season is retroactively going backwards through the season and they're uh, they're experiencing the effects of it now at the beginning of the season. It well it very well could be. I mean that's a, that's a plot device that that Moffat likes to use a lot. It's um, a great plot device. He does it well. Season 5, season 6, season 7, all of Matt Smith. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of really really good stuff. And and you know, you get to you look at season 8, you know, and 
it's just like every episode there's Missy at the end going, ha ha ha, I'm still around. And, you know, <laughs> you just we want more than that this time around, okay? Meanwhile, on an asteroid base, very, <laughs> very far, far away. away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good times. <laughs> what, are, what are some of your favorite bits from this episode, Taylor? Okay, so this episode wasn't very funny. But the bit that made me laugh the most was whenever the Vardy interface robots, their whenever their face would change to that skeptical face, that was like <laughs> <laughs> it was the like the flat mouth and the eyes, the like almost the little eyelids, that flat lines yeah. that came, the eyebrows yeah. that came down over the eyes. It was so funny every time they made that face because it was always in the it was always the best moments. Like there's one was... where they're sneaking through the hallway. And they're, like, trying to sneak by them. So they're smiling. You know, they're like, yes, uh-huh. And as they sneak by, the robot's face has changed. Like, okay, this is this ain't right. <laughs> like, where are you guys going? <laughs> it's like, it was the best face. Like, whoever designed that face, uh, God, it cracked me up. Every time they changed that face, it cracked me up. It was so it's the, it's the, it's the, wait. What yeah, what face? That's exactly what they, if they if they could talk. That's exactly what they were saying. They were like, "Now wait just a minute." Yeah. <laughs> so oh, funny. I really liked. I liked the thing with the ear. With um, they it, it auto an upgrade to their ears. They can automatically talk to each other while on that planet. I thought that was really cool. Oh, that was really cool. I wonder if that's something that. Well, because she said, I'll never lose my phone again. You know, I'll, I never, you know, I never have to, I'll never run out of battery. I'm like, wait, are they going to get these, to keep these for the rest of the season? Or, <laughs> or do they go away? I would assume they went away, but. Uh, well, it's interesting you know. he used that term, an upgrade to our ears, considering uh-huh. what we know about the season finale. Well, yes. I mean, and, and considering, you know, yeah. If, if if you don't want to be spoiled, close your ears, you know, <laughs> downgrade your ears for a minute. Uh, <laughs> downgrade your ears for a minute. Yeah. We, we know that there's going to be, the, you know, some Cybermen at the end. So The Mondasian Cybermen. The Mondasian Cybermen. Yes, well, I'm very excited to talk about that when we know more. Right. Um, so there was this line in the episode last week, and I totally forgot it. And she, she repeated it this episode, which I'm so glad because it reminded me. She says he runs like a penguin with his arse on fire. <laughs> and if that isn't the truth, oh, you know, David Tennant and Matt Smith could run so gracefully and so uh, so badass action hero. And then you have Capaldi and his little waddle and his little his little run. And man, it's the best. It's that it's exactly what it is. Penguin with his arse on fire. <laughs> I like the uh, line that he gives. Um... About or she says, uh, why you know for uh, something like it, it's for something that's chasing us. It's not running really fast. And he says, you know the thing about things that don't that don't run when they chase you, they usually have a reason not to run. <laughs> I love <laughs> that. Like, yeah, yes, that is so true. Well, and you know that reminded me of was uh, Heaven Sent was the the old you know the the monster in that I can't remember what it was called. Yeah. The, the, the veil, I think it was called. That just slowly right. chased him, just as like step after step, and it's exactly he knew that it, it didn't need a reason, you know, to run because it was going to catch him anyway, no matter where he went. So yeah, right. That's what that reminded me of. Um, I think my favorite line in this episode was right at the end. And he says, "You know, I always win at chess. I have a secret move. I kick over the board." <laughs> <laughs> And then he resets. That's not how you win, way. Capaldi. I think yeah, he that's... misunderstands. You <laughs> use that word, but I don't think you know what it means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it was a oh, but yeah, and it was a cliffhanger too, wasn't it? Yes. I, oh, I loved that. I loved that. That was so great. I missed that. You know, they, they we they had the cliffhangers in series nine, but like I like the cliffhangers that are just silly yeah. that that aren't real cliffhangers that are just like. This right. is what the next episode's going to be about. You know, I always loved those. To where it just felt like one long continuation of the story. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it, it gives the feeling like the next episode is the next is the next moment. As oh, opposed yeah. to yeah. What, we, what we've been used to, which are their self-contained adventures. And many other things could happen in between the adventures. 
Well, you know, if you think back to season seven with Clara, it was remember it was like they went on adventures like every Thursday or something. You know, she right. had a thing. She was like, it's Thursday. You know, we're going on adventures. And so they were all separated. Well, I do. I really like this where it, it was exactly – it started the moment. This episode started the moment right after she got in the TARDIS. And then right at the end of this, they, they get out and they're in London at the Frost Fair, which is what yeah. the next episode is going to be about. And there's an elephant. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> I love that kind of stuff. They did that a lot in the Classic elephant. Who. You know, you would yeah. end the you would end the story. You know, the six episode thing, and then the next episode would at the very end. It's like, uh oh, the TARDIS landed on the edge of a cliff. It's teetering. It's about to fall. You know, and then the next story would be them dealing with that. So that I always love that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think of two really good Troughton examples. Uh, he oh, so so they they land and a volcano erupts and lava is headed to them. So in the next yes. episode, it's the emergency TARDIS, TARDIS escape protocols, and it takes them to another uh, dimension. Or and the best version of this was the enemy of the world, and they kick open the TARDIS doors, and the Troughton clone, the, the the villain, goes flying out into space. The beginning of the next episode is them having to close the doors. <laughs> 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 At least so they don't go flying out into space. I'm like, yes! <laughs> Thank you, Troughton. <laughs> we begin this episode with a draft. <laughs> <laughs> you might remember from last episode. <laughs> it, it was it was hot and, and, and stale inside the TARDIS. Opening the <laughs> doors, the wind blew them out. Will they survive? Will Jamie close the door in time? <laughs> Find out next week. <laughs> Find out next week in another thrilling adventure of Doctor Who. All right, so um, final thoughts on this episode. <laughs> I, you know, I liked it. Uh, I, it wasn't the best. It was just, it was okay. It was an okay, fluffy episode of Doctor Who, which, you know, those are good. They're, fluff is fluff with Doctor Who is still good. It's still, you know, entertaining television. But, you know, if you compare this to something like, you know, Heaven Sent, or which is which is right. 10 out of 10 in my book, you know, this is, you know, lower on the scale. Um I, I really enjoy uh, the future episodes. Um, I, I usually enjoy them more than the past episodes. So, you know, I, I we'll, we'll see what the next episode sure. brings. But, I, you know, I really enjoyed what they did with this. You know, the, the, the robots were great. They were kind of funny. And they were, they were a fun uh, little monster to deal with. And always good work from Capaldi. And, and Bill is, you know, becoming... Um, you know, she's her own companion. She's not just a carbon copy of any of the others. She's got great aspects from other companions that uh, that I love. She's got you know the the wittiness and and of uh, and the que- uh, the wittiness of uh, Donna, but sort of the questioning of like Clara and uh, and uh, Martha, that kind of thing. So um, there's a lot of good stuff that's coming from all the characters. And we didn't see Nardal that much, but I know I love Nardal, so I can't wait to see more of him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I liked this episode. It was it was pretty good. I, I I'm gonna uh, share your opinions on that too, and I I think you know on its worst day, the weakest episode of Doctor Who is still better than some of the best episodes of other shows, unless you're talking about like Fear Her or Two with the the Flesh, the Almost People. Those were pretty bad, but outside of those, I think <laughs> I think the worst kind of episodes from Doctor Who are still better than some of the best episodes of other shows. And I think this is a good example of, you know, it was a good story. It was fun to watch. It, it certainly had its moments, its ups and its downs. It was kind of funny. I thought I thought it was a little funnier than I think you think it was, but uh, it was funny. But um, overall, it was like okay, I'm ready to move on to the next one. And I don't, I don't feel like this will be an episode that I necessarily go back and watch again because I think, oh man, I, right. I really missed that episode with Smile with the with the robots and the emojis. Yeah, mm-hmm. I probably won't. But <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. It's, it, it, it's, it's decent. It wasn't terrible. It was a good future episode. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited for the next one. Calculating. Voices from the Vortex gives Smile Six 
out of 10. And now it's time for... Oh my god, god that, that promo. promo. Oh my god, that promo. Oh my god, that promo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true though. It was, it is it was true. pretty good. It, it is pretty good. good. And the and it, right at the end I was like, "Whoa." <laughs> I had literally yeah, said, it, "Whoa." I went I went uh, Joey Lawrence there quickly. for a minute. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That dates you pretty well. <laughs> oh, I'm 31. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I liked I liked that it, it escalated quickly. It, it got very dark very fast. Yes, it, it was did. all it was all frost fair and something's yes. under the ice and then have you ever murdered a man? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know where that's going. I'm kind. Of, I'm kind of. I'm a little worried. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, that was great. Uh, Have you ever <laughs> murdered a man? <laughs> that's funny. That's exactly how Bill should say it. That's exactly. <laughs> oh, that's exactly what. That's the feeling I got. Um, <laughs> so this one was good. I like. You know, I'm not a big fan of the past episodes, um, but um, I really liked the. Well, I'm not a big code. fan of you. <laughs> I don't care. Um, I really liked the uh, the Shakespeare Code, and this one look. This one reminds me a lot of the Shakespeare Code. I think it looks good. Uh, the one line in there, especially, is a big parallel. Is when she says, uh, "You know, if I step on a butterfly, I could mess up time or whatever." You know, it's like I don't. I don't feel like Donna was worried about that, and I don't feel like <laughs> Clara was worried about that, or Amy really. It was just this one where it's. It was Martha and Bill. They're like, wait a minute, you know. Don't we have to be careful? And he's like, nah, it'll be fine. The two the two smart companions. Seriously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're like, whoa, whoa, what if I accidentally step on a cricket? What if I <laughs> kick a dude in the shin? What if I murder a man? Like it's <laughs> They're worried about their actions, and I appreciate that from them. Yeah, I do too. Um, this, I mean, this looks good. The monster looks great. It looks like a proper monster, and you know, you'll have a proper bad villain. I mean, the last two monsters have been, you know, just sort of that technology gone wrong, like we talked about. This looks like Maybe there's a guy this in there is technology who's like, gone wrong. yeah, this 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 one looks like there's a beast, and there's a guy. He's like the beast must feed, and so you know he's. <laughs> He's got an agenda. Feed so. <laughs> me, doctor. Feed me. <laughs> well, that's great too. When he says, you know, she's like, "What are we gonna?" The mo- the monster needs to eat, or he's eating people. And she's like, "What are we gonna do?" And he's like, "We're gonna get eaten." <laughs> <laughs> he's got the best solutions. <laughs> he does. He really does. Um, but that, yeah, that line at the end—that's the—that's the big one right yeah. there. Have you killed anyone? Because we're getting into the she's she's finding out who he really is. And you right. know the first the first one it's like oh you're an alien you travel in outer space and you you know you go in in time and you have all these cool adventures okay you know and then the second one it's like oh you like to help people you're you know you're you go on these adventures because you like to make things right, right. and we learn a little bit about your past oh he ran away he stole a TARDIS okay and then this one. It's going to be, you learn about that dark side. You have side. A murdered a man. <laughs> Murder, Doctor. Murder, Murder Doctor. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I agree. I, mean, I agree. I she's going to learn agree. about this that dark be, side. This is going to be an exciting episode. I feel like we're going to start getting closer to some of the overall story arcs, the seasonal story arcs about the vault. I think we're going to get some more information about why he swore an oath to stay on Earth. Um, well, yeah. Well, and I, because I have I, in a, this episode, I think we get to see. I think Nardal's in this episode. I've seen in other trailers. I think he's in this one, but he wasn't in the trailer. The next time trailer, right after the episode. So I don't know. We'll see. You know, what does Nardal think about this? If he was such, uh, he was so adamant about the Doctor staying <laughs> and not right. going anywhere. If he's in there, what's going to happen? Because he didn't. Uh, for some reason, the Doctor didn't end up back where he was supposed to go. He ended up true. There might be in some the sort of yeah. There was a the TARDIS took him the somewhere. TARDIS, else. TARDIS has clearly taken him where he needs to be. So something's going on. Uh huh. I have a couple of th- I, I have a theory about this season, and I know I've, I've read it online too. Other people have had this theory, 
So I'm going to say I've developed the theory at the same time. But, uh, okay, sure. But um, <laughs> I'm wondering if all of this doesn't take place on Mondas. On where? Mondas. I don't think this is Earth. I think oh, it's really? Mondas. Because Mondas was supposed to be a twin planet to Earth before it was flung off of its orbit and sent You're out right. into the, the galaxy. What if yeah. the Doctor's on Mondas and not on Earth? And, and the, what so if... So Bill is not human, she's Mondasian? Is that what you're saying? Well, but they're, they're, it's parallel. They're, 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 they're both Earth. They're both humans. But right. yeah, she's Mondasian. Correct. Okay. I well, just that would say the, that, a small... <laughs> that, that's a good theory. No, that's great. That's, yeah. Very interesting. I think it would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's ponder on that one. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. (laughs) Well, we'll ponder between now and the next review, so we won't make everyone wait. But, um... (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Hey, guys, listen. Thanks for joining us again. Definitely. Uh, This is, so far, a great season. We're really enjoying it. Uh, We hope you're enjoying it. We hope you enjoy listening to us enjoy it. And, um, (laughs) hey, enjoy have a great, yeah. have a great, uh, have a great you know, week. We enjoy and when you enjoy listening to us enjoy it. So, so enjoy the enjoyment before yes. we've enjoyed all of the enjoyment. Well, thanks for listening. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm stopping. We're good. Okay. Hi. <laughs> no, uh, guys, was... have a great weekend. I was going to say, remember, don't murder anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good night, all. <laughs> This has been another Voices from the Vortex review for Series 10, starring Matthew Whitecamp as Matt the Time Lord, Taylor Davidson as Taylor the Time Lord, and Danielle Davidson as the sexy voice of the TARDIS. All views expressed are the opinions of the two dudes from Gallifrey, and as such should be taken extremely seriously. Follow Voices from the Vortex on all social media, including Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Subscribe to us on iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the podcast, please email us at voicesfromthevortex at gmail.com. Doctor Who and all related materials are copyright BBC, and no infringement of copyright is intended. It's heavily implied, but never intended. All material is fan fiction of a satirical nature. Please, Mr. Moffat, don't sue us. We know you have a sense of humor. See you next time in the Vortex! Temporal flight engaged. Returning to the Vortex. End of transmission.